There's nothing quite like camping. The nature, the solitude, the simplicity of unplugging from the world and learning that we don't need a bunch of tech to be happy. Just peace and quiet and trees and, and mosquitoes. Ah, screw it. <laughs> Let's play some games. Aha, uh -huh, yeah, camping time. Uh, I, I love camping so much. Look at this freaking nature, you guys. Look at it. Oh, check it out. This mushroom is freaking awesome, man. And, and these mushrooms. And here's a lake. And holy crap, that's a, that's a deer. A freaking deer, just for me. Oh, I'm so lucky. Luckier than you, sitting in your home without any mosquitoes or millipedes crawling up your leg. I know you're jealous, but, but hey, maybe if I show you a bit about my camping trip, you can enjoy seeing me have fun in nature and pretend that you're not in your cozy, warm home without mosquitoes biting your face. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, gosh, I sure do wonder what tech old tech we brought into the wilderness. Well, that's none of your business. And it's rude to assume that I'm going to tell you. But I probably will, anyways. Uh, but first, let me tell you about my trip to set the seed. So, my main style of camping is backpacking. I love to hike into my site, carrying everything on my back, and because of that, I travel quite light. I have a couple different shelter setups, but this trip I went for my hammock. I usually hike and camp in the early spring or late fall when there's no bugs, but this trip was in the summer, obviously, which means that bugs are a factor. So I had to use my bigger hammock with a built-in bug net. And beyond my sleeping setup, there's not a ton else that I bring. Well, well, a few things, and I'll show you a few of them in a, in a bit. But the main thing that I really wanted to show you, and the reason why I'm showing you my camping crap on my tech channel, is that I brought a tech with me. In another camping video that I made about a year ago, I showed myself sleeping in the dirt and cuddling with my POW kitty, V90. In that video, I said that it was a great handheld for camping for three reasons. One, the battery lasted a super long time, especially when you lower the brightness. Two, it's a clamshell device, so when it's folded up, the screen and the buttons are protected from being damaged in your pack. And three, it's cheap, which means that you don't have to be all precious with it. It's okay if it gets a little dinged up or carried off by a chipmunk to his chipmunk family and the little kid chipmunks are like oh, what's that dad and he's all like hey check it out kids look what your cool dad brought home it's some sort of human video game thing none of the other chipmunk kids have a video game <laughs> i bet you think your chipmunk dad is pretty great now huh and then his wife is all like can I talk to you in the other room for a minute? And then she tears into him about how he shouldn't be trying to win the love of his kids by stealing video games from humans and how it doesn't make up for the fact that he's barely home and all the kids really want is a chipmunk dad who's around and, and plays with them. And also, why doesn't he ever take her out anymore? To, to the chipmunk ballet. What, what, what was I talking about again? Oh yeah, uh, camping with handhelds. This year, I decided to change it up and made the bold decision to go with the RG Nano, that teeny tiny little retro handheld from Amblerdick that I reviewed recently on my channel. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Tech Dweeb, the RG Nano isn't cheap and it's not a clamshell. So by your own criteria, that would make it a crappy handheld for camping, wouldn't it, you fake tech YouTuber fraud? Well, that was harsh. I, I had a freaking awesome time with the RG Nano on this trip. Way more than I was expecting, and for different reasons that I was expecting. And I, I'm excited to show you why I think this is actually an amazing camping handheld. Or just a travel handheld in general. But first, I need to tell you that this RG Nano was given to me by Lit NXT. They sell this, and they were kind enough to send me one to make this video. So if you want one, you should buy it from them. There's a link in the description below. I recently reviewed the RG Nano on my channel. Uh, I thought it was a ton of fun, but it had shortcomings. On the plus side, it uh, has a bright and beautiful screen. The build quality is amazing. It has an all metal shell, and the operating system is quick and snappy and convenient but it has obvious downsides. It's pretty darn small, and it has a square screen, that, which means that it lends itself better to Game Boy and Game Boy Color games, but it's less ideal for 4x3 TV console games like NES or Super N Nintendo or whatever. And while it can do PS1 or Game Boy Advance, it's not ideal. And compared to a full-size handheld, it's really not anywhere close to the same comfort and usability. 
However, when you're camping, all of those comfort factors kind of get thrown out the window into the raccoon poop. Which brings me to the first reason that I think the RG Nano is a great handheld for camping. So when you're camping, especially when you're a hiking camper like me, a major factor in the gear that you choose is the size and the weight. Yeah, it would be nice to bring your Steam Deck and be able to play GameCube or Doom Eternal in the wilderness, but the Steam Deck is big and heavy, in case you haven't noticed. Camping is all about sacrificing comfort for utility. So a good camping handheld needs to be first and first mostly portable, which means that it needs to be small and light. Granted, the RG Nano could be lighter. Having an all-metal shell is a lot heavier than having a plastic shell, and I actually uh, think they they should make a plastic version of this someday. But even with the metal shell, the RG Nano is pretty darn light. It's so small, it, I can shove it in any pocket, and it's so light that you barely notice it's there. I had this in my pocket the whole trip, and because of that, I could super easily whip it out and play with it whenever I found a free minute or two. Uh, speaking of which, that brings me to my next reason the RG Nano is a great handheld for camping, and it's a feature that I liked when I made my review video, but I didn't really get a chance to use it to its full potential. But on this camping trip, I, I loved this feature. You see, when you're camping, you're all over the place. You have a ton of stuff to do. You, you, you gotta set up your tent or your hammock, you gotta get your bed all set up, your raid fly, cook food, maybe build a fire, or carve the name of your sweetheart into the side of a tree, but you're also there to chill out and unwind. So uh, camping is a lot of going back and forth between doing stuff and relaxing. And this is where this feature comes in. Quick power off and quick resume. It works like this. You've just set up your hammock and you're ready to sit in the dirt and continue your game of harvest mood. So you just hold down the power button and boom, after a few seconds, the device boots up and takes you directly into your game. And then, then when you're done playing because you need to make some food and hunker down before it gets dark and the monsters come out, just hold that power button and the device will Will power off and save your spot exactly where you left it. I mean, lots of devices have a feature like this, like Onion OS on the Miu Mini and even Arc OS on the 353 devices. But having it on a tiny little handheld that's so small and light that it can live in my pocket is a godsend while you're camping. And the final reason that the RG Nano is great for camping is because it's super tough. I, I didn't have the gumption to drop it off the side of a cliff to test its durability, but I feel like it's tough enough that it would survive that test. It, it's built like a tank, a tiny little tank. And that's why I felt good to bring it with me on a camp trip, where your stuff kind of gets bumped around as it jostles around your backpack while you're running away from an angry moose. Say what you want about the Nano and its shortcomings, but the build quality is not something that anyone could reasonably complain about. It feels just as tough as the rest of my camping gear, which admittedly isn't saying a lot because most of my gear is made to be ultralight and easy rather than built for toughness. But you get what I'm saying. If you brought a big full featured handheld like the RG353V or the, the RP3 Plus, then you'd be babying that thing to make sure it didn't get all dinged up or dropped or pooped on by a skunk. I, I feel like if this RG Nano got a bit dinged up and scratchy looking, then it would actually add to its charm. The RG Nano is meant to be used. Hey, take it with you. Don't baby it. Actually use the thing. If you keep this on a shelf all, all perfect and pristine, you're kind of missing the point of this thing. And there are other great things about the RG Nano and admittedly some shortcomings. Well, I've already talked about those in my video review linked below. But uh, since making that video, I've come to really enjoy the Nano more than I thought I would. Uh, game Boy and Game Boy Color games especially. My current main game is Heroes of Might and Magic 2 on the Game Boy Color. I had no idea there was a full-fledged Heroes of Might and Magic game on Game Boy Color and I played this most of my trip. It's a good game for camping as well because a uh, turn can be pretty quick. Yeah, it just takes a few minutes to move your dudes or finish up a battle so you could squeeze in these quick little gaming sessions. But I did play some other games. I have a Harvest Moon playthrough that I'm working on and I played this uh, Infinity game that I didn't know about that actually looks like a, a, a solid RPG. <laughs> I'm gonna play more of this one. I loaded up this RG Nano with all the old school retro games and I scraped all the box art so it's a great experience browsing through the game lists looking for games that you've never tried or that look interesting. Just think about that. Every game for the old school retro consoles on a little Game Boy that's so small it could live in your pocket and take with you into the back country. 
I wanted to show you a little bit about my camping setup, but I don't want this video to be super long. I, I might make a dedicated video about my, my camping gear. Uh, let me know in the comments if you'd actually find that interesting, or if you'd rather me shut up about this camping crap and stick to tech. But I will show you one thing because I filmed it, so why the heck not? This is my cooking kit. It's a very minimalist setup. It's meant to be just a, as light as possible, and let me boil a few cups of water to rehydrate my meals, which are mostly just dehydrated stuff that's calorie dense and really light, like rice and beans, that sort of thing. So this little pouch on the outside is a pot cozy. It's made of a Dyneema composite fabric, which is super strong and durable, but also incredibly lightweight. It has some padding on the inside to keep in the heat, and I have a tiny little metal pot scrubber, and a fold-up titanium spork. And this little guy is a tiny little pot gripper, so that I don't burn my dweeby fingers. <laughs> I, I love this piece of kit. It's called a hot lips that goes on the edge of the pot so that you can drink without burning your lips off. And this little guy is my stove. It's called a fancy feast stove because it's made out of a cat food can. It has some fiberglass wicking around the edge of this inner can, which draws the fuel up around the outside edge. And the fuel that I use in this is denatured alcohol, which I keep in this little squeezy drink thing. And I have a tiny little flint and steel to light it. On this trip, I also had my coffee bug. So I used this little demonstration to warm up my coffee. Oh, and while the stove is going, you'll want a windscreen. So I have this super light titanium windscreen that's just the right size for my pot. And there it is. That's how I boil water. I cook my food in the backcountry. Uh, this is just one of my food methods. I have others, but to be honest, usually I, I don't cook. If I'm backpacking, I just take food that I could eat without cooking, you know, like tortillas and peanut butter and trail mix. This was a bit more of a chill trip. I, I did some cooking, drank some coffee, filmed some stuff for you guys, played some games, you know, recharged my batteries. Oh, uh, speaking of which, I guess I have one more thing that I can show you. This is my new battery bank that is great for camping. It's called the Shargeek Starship Seer. It's a 10,000 hour milliamp hour battery that has a little display with a built-in clock. And then the best part is this little cord keychain. It's just like a little USB-C cord that's all bundled up in a tight little protective case, but it works awesome and it's so small and minimalist. This can charge my phone twice on a trip, which is perfect for a shorter trip like this. I'm super happy with this thing. Uh, I'll include a link to where you could buy this in the description below. And I guess I could include some links to the other cooking gear as well. I, I don't know if all this stuff is still available, but I'll try to find what I can for you. If I do an extended camping gear video at some point, I'll make sure to find proper links for all my stuff. And I will also include a link to this RG Nano that you could buy from Lit NXT. They're a good company and they've been good enough to send me quite a few things to show you guys. So show some love and check out their link below if you want an RG Nano. And that'll do it for me. Uh, this, that's my little RG Nano camping adventure. Now let me know if you like this sort of content. I never know if it's too out of my tech niche to post this sort of thing. So please uh, feel free to let me know. If you're not into it, I want to hear that. I have lots of interests and I'm happy to share them, but only if you actually want me to. Otherwise, I'll stick to flapping my arms around on my desk as I complain about retro emulation devices and GPUs. <laughs> I could do that stuff all day long. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching this video to the end. If you like my content and want to support the things that I do, then please consider checking out the Patreon link in the description below. If you liked this video, you might also enjoy my RG Nano review and also my previous Camping with Handhelds video. Those will be linked on the screen right now and at the top of the description below, and you should go watch them now because this video is done. I'm Deck Dweeb, thanks for watching. Bye bye